Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Rocket Raccoon, a chasing tail. Obviously I don't really need to give you much introduction, but for those of you I don't know, I'll try. You know, um, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, obviously is the character that this was from. You know, um, the movie is, uh, you know, fantastic, it's funny, filled with lots of cool action, great acting, and, um, and basically it's the movie that, uh, kind of got me, that got me back into reading superhero comics again. Like, this one. You know, I mean, like, yes, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Not, not the movie that was talking about, like, how the hero that we deserve or need or whatever. You know, not the, um, you know, super, uh, actiony filled um, movie with uh, you know Captain America fighting Nazi. No, no, it was the far out crazy movie that was uh, that that had an anthropomorphic tree, you know, teaming up with uh, various other creatures, and uh, one of which was a talking raccoon, and you know, trying to sell a. a magical infinity super rock, super stone or infinity stone to an intergalactic hoarder who lives <clears throat> and most likely funds himself through the mining operation getting the various brain and uh, bone and whatever other matter from the inside of a gigantic ancient celestial god being thing. <clears throat> You know, yeah. Um, and, you know, like, all I can say is, wow, there's, um, when I got back, I noticed that there's a lot of stuff that I missed, you know. Whether it be from, you know, super-powered kitty cats with rage rings to, um, <clears throat> to apparently, like, uh, apparently Venom is now uh, gone from a, a uh, regular, essentially a clone of Sp not a clone, but, you know, a... Spider-Man knockoff to be his nemesis to like a double amputee war veteran who looks more like a commando than like pun like the Punisher than Spider-Man. So like uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, we'll talk about more superhero comics some other time. You know, um, until I'm just gonna talk about this. You know, the the comic that I'm looking at is uh, Chasing Tail. And there are uh, three stories. The first of which involves um, Rocket being essentially framed for this murder that he com that he did not commit. <clears throat> and um, and he's like realized that it's a doppelganger, and he's like wanting to find out who this guy is, and so forth, and uh, you know, see what's his deal, see if there's more of his people around, because. Up until this point, everyone, uh, at least he thought it was the last one. <clears throat> and, um, and uh, I think this seems to be more going the comics continuity than the, I mean, the movies, because, well, I think it was just made up by some guys. But anyway, back to the point, um, and, um, it, at the same time, he also has, um, He's, he's like an, an, an army of uh, evil exes, or not evil ex, but an army of like really pissed off ex-girlfriends that are trying to kill him. <clears throat> and you know, like it seems like, wow, this guy, this guy gets around more than James Bond, you know? <clears throat> if he has that that many evil exes, that many exes that want to kill him. And um, I don't want to say more than that. I'll just say is that, you know, again, it's like it's really it's really funny. You know, fantastic book. I mean, I mean the the story. The second story is um, is pretty cool. Um, it's uh, like it's where he's telling a story about a box, and like he, he's uh, like babysitting these campers, and um, you know they they want to tell a story, but then um, and then I really like the and Brute says don't tell the story about the map. In his usual I am group language. And then he says, No, no, I don't want to tell it. You tell it, Groot. So Groot tells the story. So essentially, just like everyone is all always just saying, I am Groot, and the 
whole thing is just entirely told via visuals because, well, again, the only thing that anyone could say is, I am Groot, you know, and um, I thought that was kind of funny, kind of cool, and, and it's told well, like, you can tell, or it's drawn well, like, you, you get the gist of what's going on, and, uh, yeah, you know, again, another good story, and then the last story is, um, it's like it starts with him, like, uh, I think killing like fleas on Ego, the living planet, and like, um, and uh, he's, um, or I don't know if they're fleas or ticks or whatever, but anyway, um, he's uh, then hired on by uh, Cosmo the dog to help uh, these, uh, these uh, robots that were like kidnapped from their homes, like they were meant for wars, but now the, all the wars are over, now they want to be like, now the robots that were designed for war want to be peaceful, and, um, and, uh, you know, yeah, some of, some of them have been kidnapped, and Rocket was hired to save them. <clears throat> and during this, he's partnered up with a robot who speaks entirely in binary, you know, and, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, overall, I think this book was just hilarious, you know, funny, you know, uh, I like the art that was used in all of the stories, like, I, you know, like Rocket, you looks actually really kind of cute, you know, and uh, yeah, I just find the whole thing just great, you know, overall I give this a, a, um, <clears throat> a 5 out of 5, definite recommendation, it's hilarious, you don't really need to know any continuity behind any of it. You know, it's just a fun read. Go check it out. And until next time, and um, next time we're going to be talking about one of the more, another very iconic figure, of who's been in giant monsters, and he's pretty much synonymous with that. And uh, yeah. Anyway, until then, see you later. <clears throat> You know, please support your local bookstores and libraries with your patronage money, donations, and what have you, and have a nice day. <laughs>